How do I read 80 books a year despite my insane clinic schedule? Stay tuned and I'll tell you. Hi everyone, it's Productivity Doc coming at you with tips and tricks for doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals and anyone else to help you avoid burnout, get more done in less time, and make more time for the more important things in life. In this episode, I thought I would share my strategy that I've used for quite a while to sort of extend my interest beyond healthcare. And I found it really quite helpful in terms of making sure that I can explore other interests outside of just what I'm doing in my day-to-day healthcare practice, just with the craziness and hecticness with all of that. Just going back, when I was training to be a doctor, I always got this message from my preceptors, make sure you have a life outside of medicine Make sure that you have other interests outside of medicine because you don't want to be those one of those doctors that's just only interested in medicine, burning out, you know, you know or maybe they're, uh, they go to a cocktail party and uh, every time someone tells a story, they always bring it back to medicine somehow. Probably doesn't go over all that well. So early on, I tried to make some time to do some reading about things that are outside of medicine, exploring my own interests, be it history or politics or language or technology, number of different things. But just with everything going on, you know, especially going to classes, back to med school, studying for exams, doing labs, clinical rotations, how did I make time to actually have time to read and explore these other interests outside of what I was doing? I'm sure as busy doctors and nurses, or other healthcare professionals, you have a hard time with insane clinic schedules, then finding time or the energy to do the reading that you would like to do. Maybe there's some famous novel that you've always wanted to read, but you just haven't had the time to do it. So what are some things that you can do to get around to finding the time to doing that reading that you've always wanted to do? Maybe you wanna explore some new books, maybe some podcasts or magazines. With the busy practice and trying to juggle friends, family, and other responsibilities, it can be quite a challenge. So what is my solution to this problem? Well, audiobooks. I find that audiobooks are an excellent way that you can kill two birds with one stone. I usually go for about an hour jog after my clinic day, and during that time I listen to at least about an hour of an audiobook, usually when you factor in time for stretching, travel time, the actual jog and travel time home, I usually get through about an hour and a half of an audiobook. And I find that I can usually finish a typical length audiobook, usually around you know 10 to 12 hours, within about a week that way. So that's about 52 audiobooks a year at least. Now I know a lot of people kind of you know thumb their nose at the idea of listening to audiobooks. Well that's not real reading. Well, I would argue that you're still getting the information into your mind, you're still processing the information. And I love it because you can listen to an audiobook while you're doing a low cognitive level task. You can do it while you're jogging, as long as you're being careful, you're not jogging with there's lots of cars and you're paying attention to your surroundings. You can do it while you're folding your laundry, you can do it while you're doing dishes, I do it while I'm making my lunches for the week, and I don't make them every day, I make five all at once. And if for the days that I'm not out jogging when I'm actually on my exercise bike, those days I actually read a book and I have a little book holder on my exercise bike. And it's, it's a way that uh, it actually motivates me to exercise because if I have a book or something that I'm interested in reading, then I say to myself, you know, except for other times, for the most part, when I'm reading this I'm on the exercise bike so it's kind of like hanging a little carrot out in front of me to encourage me to exercise and by using this method I am able to generally get through about 77 to 80 books a year which uh, has been great and I've been doing it for probably the past 16 years which has been really quite helpful I mentioned before that I've listened to hundreds of hours of productivity podcasts and uh, a lot of the read a lot of the big productivity books and uh, this is basically how I accomplished it with my busy schedule. Otherwise, I think it would be absolutely impossible to do. So what should you do with this information? Well, if this interests you, what I would recommend is checking out your local library's audiobook section. Usually they have a lot of books on CD. You can rip these from the 
uh, CD, put them onto your smartphone or other MP3 device. You can often download a lot of these audiobooks, although there's usually a time limit with that. Another option is Audible, which it, it's a great program. It's very convenient, but it is a bit pricey. It's usually about $15 a month, and that gives you a selection to one audiobook from their selection. However, more recently, they've added a Audible Plus library, which is quite good because it actually gives you hundreds of free audiobooks. As long as you're still subscribed, you can access those. So that's, that's good, but you got to sort of decide whether or not the 15 a month for an audiobook is useful when maybe you can get the same audiobooks from your library for free. Another option is podcasts. So let's say you're maybe not all that big on reading books. If you can access podcasts, then you can learn about the same information that you're interested about. I find that most books nowadays are about 220 pages or about 12 hours worth of listening or reading time. So if I want to actually, you know, record things and record down what I'm reading as sort of like a, a carrot for rewarding myself for, hey, you know, you've completed a book, good work. I find that 12 hours of listening time or 12 hours of reading time is sort of a good cutoff point. If I'm not actually reading a traditional book, magazines or uh, podcast, then that's a way that you can record that as a book. So give that a try and see how many you can get done. So as a pro tip, it can often be quite motivating to see your progress written down. What I like to do is whenever I finish a book, I put a little hash mark on my yearly calendar. And then that way I can keep track of how many books I've got, how many more I've got to reach a particular goal. And give yourself a little pat on the back whenever you finish a book. That can help to motivate you with that. So if you found this helpful, hit that like button down below. Comment down below if there's something that you would like me to talk about or if you have some suggestions for improving the videos. And if you want more productivity tips and tricks, especially for healthcare professionals, but other people can benefit from them too, hit that subscribe button down below. And if you have any colleagues who you think that can benefit from this, let them know. All right. Thank you. And I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.